Welcome, everybody, to the Winter Circle Sports Betting Channel. You're watching the Winter Circle Sports Betting Podcast. I'm your host, Ross Benjamin of gamblersworld.net, our sponsor site, and like every Tuesday, and it is Tuesday, February the 20th, I'm joined by my esteemed colleagues, both of gamblersworld.net, Mr. Jesse Shul and Mr. Sean Higgs. And today we're going to be covering college basketball, and uh, we got some Three good games uh, we're going to cover today and uh, see if we can continue to winning for you. In any event, um, our sponsor site, gamblersworld.net, you'll not only find us three, but seven other great handicappers, and we guarantee our selections there, where if you don't win, you don't make a profit on all single-game and multi-game daily packages, as well as subscription plans of 30 days or fewer. We will credit your account back the exact amount of your purchase price. And don't forget, go to gamblersworld.net right now, $3.99 special uh, on the rest of the NCAA basketball season, which will cover you not only through the end of the regular season conference tournaments, but all the postseason tournaments, NIT, CIT, CBI, uh, and uh, the NCAA tournament. So uh, I I hope I didn't miss any of those three-letter words, but uh, right through the NCAA championship (laughs) game. In any event, um, there you have it, three ninety nine. Don't forget, folks, gamblersworld.net, ten of the finest handicappers you find anywhere on the internet. Mr. Shul, uh, tell the folks a little bit about what you got going on at gamblersworld.net and uh, what you want to share with the audience in terms of past performance, promotions, whatever you prefer. Yeah, I've been uh, kind of taking it easy after the Super Bowl and then, of course, the uh, NBA All-Star Weekend. There hasn't been as many games on the board to bet on. So I've been kind of, you know, firing away when I can, but been far and few between. Uh, Still got great numbers for the year though. And uh, college hoops is going well, still hitting uh, at a pretty high percentage with with college hoops and looking forward to today's action. And uh, I've said it before, I'll say it again, the month of March coming up, the games get more important, more significant in all sports. You've got the playoffs coming up in, NHL and NBA, and you've got the tournament coming up in uh, College Hoops. So really looking forward to that. Me as well, Jesse. Me as well. And Sean, uh, did you have the over 353 and a half in the NBA All-Star game? What a joke. Anyway, so yeah, so I went 2-1 yesterday in college basketball with uh, some smaller schools, the NC Central and uh, South Carolina State, and looking to uh, continue some college basketball tonight with a three-pack winner, NBA. Come on. but that's And how about Adam Silver's nonsense of like, well, you scored the most points. Congratulations. Like, so matter of factly, like, was that like, because he said, oh, it's going to be a good game this year. They're going to play defense. And they just went out and basically peed all over what he said. Is that why he was yeah. so annoyed with those guys? Like, first of all, yeah. you make this joke league. You, 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 you chose to have a joke league because this is like basically a regular season game. Just guys coming out, shoot three pointers all over the joint. So this is what you get. Um, I don't know. I didn't watch it, but yeah, it, it's not like a regular season game. It's it's an absolute travesty. It's uh insult to the integrity of the game, at least in the NBA regular season. Yes, there's a lot of high scoring games. Certainly, uh, some teams are um, defense is an afterthought, but for the most part, there is defense being played during regular season action, and like there's none. Back in the there's day, absolutely none in the All Star game. They 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 showed off a little bit. Guys would go out, you know, shoot. It was it was a little fun in games. But then these guys were like, you know what? I want to win. Like yeah. Then you had all your Hall of Fame guys playing defense. Not now. I mean, ha- Halliburton. I was like, oh, maybe I should take him as a uh, MVP just because he's the home player on the home court. Yeah. Normally, that guy's going out and putting on a show for the home team, and the, and the team would encourage that. Even back in the day, they'd be like, oh, whoever, John Stockton, David Robinson, whoever, they they put on a show for the home. Not now. Now he's. I I have. It's yeah, terrible. you know, it's a terrible and, product. And I, Sean and Jesse, I went on a rant yesterday with uh, before we got going with Doug Upstone uh, in this portion of our show, and um, I just think that they should do away with all uh, all star games altogether I, because they're all a joke. I mean, the NFL, uh, you know, they name a Pro Bowl team, and it seems like thirty three percent of the guys opt out. 
uh, of playing in the Pro Bowl, and then they bring in all these uh, players that didn't actually make the original Pro Bowl roster and now have a chance to play in the Pro Bowl. And again, no defense being played. Is it a flag uh, football it's, basi- now? it's basically flag football, correct. And uh, the same thing with Major League Baseball, I guess that's about as true to form as you're going to get of a real game. Uh, but by the same token, it's not what it used to be. I mean, I go back, and again, you guys are going to laugh because I'm showing my age. I remember nine, ten years old watching the American League versus the National League in and, and an intense battle because both leagues, there was a lot of pride back then in playing in the All-Star game. And and uh, Pete Rose barreling over Ray Fossey at home plate in the bottom of the career. ninth. And, but, yeah, ruined his career. That's right, Sean. So, I mean – Again, I, here's the thing with me, and I'll let you guys comment, and then i got to do my promo, and we'll get on to the picks, folks, so just be patient for a second. Um, I think naming an NFL All-Pro team uh, at the end of the season, uh, first team and second team, uh, college basketball naming three you know, three uh, All-American teams, which they do, and there's no All-Star game in college basketball. Uh, the NHL, the same thing. Wait to the end of the year. Why play? I mean, even the NHL has become a joke, Jesse. You know what I mean? And you could chime in on this with the totals. Uh, it's There's no defense played. There's no body checks thrown. Um, and, and then what we just alluded to, um, the NBA. I mean, nobody wants to play defense. It, it, it's an, if You look at the total in the game, it's 353 and a half. And they scored 391 points in the game. One team the winners scored over 200 points. It's just an insult to the integrity of the game, like I alluded to. Uh, do away with the All-Star games. Just name, because, you first of all, you're playing an All-Star game in the middle of the season. So you're giving somebody an All-Star notation, meaning a player, for his performance in the first half, half of the season. Who cares? I want to know who the All-Stars are, who the All-Pros are, after an 82-game schedule in the NBA, after an 18-game schedule in the NFL, and uh, so on. You know, uh, it's it's ridiculous to play these meaningless games in the middle of, you know, the NHL gets it right. If you want to give players a time off, the NHL, what they've done is alternated teams getting a week off through the course of the year. So there's not that stoppage in play uh, for a prolonged period of time, even though they do it for the All-Star game. But if you cut out the All-Star game, the NHL has the solution for you. You cut the All-Star game out and you play, um, you, you give each team a week off alternating throughout the course of the year. So there's never a stop in the action. That's the way I would go about it. I, I, what do I know? I'm just a handicapper. I don't run any of these pro leagues. Uh, but that that would be my remedy to the whole su- situation. Let me get to my promos, and then I'll let these guys comment. We'll move on. Uh, all, since August 4th of last year, 303 and 253 at Winter Cir- at the uh, GamblersWorld.net site. Uh, that's good for uh, a profit of $21,630. Uh, modest 23 and 17, my last 40 in college basketball, 58%. College basketball totals. I had a loser last night, but 11 and 6 the last 17, 70 and 39 with my last 109, which is good for 65%. And my college basketball top plays, which are four units and above, uh, 117 and 86 with my last 203 in that category, which is good for 58%. And it'll make you a ton of money. Uh, anyway, uh, your thoughts, guys, and then we'll move on to our free pick in terms of the all star thing. No thoughts for me. I'm I'm not watching them. Um, you know, I think they've gotten greedy. They they get they want to uh, promote it and get it, get all the money that comes with having an NBA All Star game or an NHL All Star game. But if uh, if people stop paying for it, then uh, they they'll have to uh, change it or do away with it. So my yeah. suggestion to everybody out there is to tune out. Don't watch it. Don't pay for it. Yeah, and and if you bet on it, you're crazy, Sean. I mean the NBA. Can we just have a three point shooting and a and a slam dunk contest? That's it. And and yeah. and have actual all stars in it, not a bunch of random and I don't I, I don't watch regular season games, so I'm definitely not tuning into this. But I'd tune in if it was like all the stars, not a bunch of randos. Oh, a skills competition, a three on three. So who watches that crap? 
Nobody yeah, watches that yeah. nonsense. The guy who wanted to slam and dunk, NFL, dunk. I okay. listen. I, I remember. I think Sean Taylor lighting up a punter in a, in a in a Pro Bowl game. Like they actually yeah. some used to play football in a Pro Bowl game. I get now of saying, you know what? We want to say that's a long season. I totally get that, and the NFL should because if they're so worried about player safety and you want to take away uh, regular preseason games and add regular season games to Thursday night games, that's fine. I'm sure the players would be like, just give us the honor. Maybe we get together and it's some kind of fan fest. Maybe that would be all right. But baseball, at least those guys have home fields for the series or whatever, right? That's didn't Sealy do that a while ago? That made it. Kind of competitive, yeah. But how do you fake that? You can't fake ninety-five mile an hour fastballs. No pitcher wants to go no, out there and get it, shells. It's, it's so like least, I said, baseball it's at least true to form. In that that I mean, nobody's going to go out and throw meatballs to get, give up. You got the home run derby is great. That's all you need there. That's all you yeah. need. I mean, I, I don't mind yeah, the All Star game. It, Maybe it, it loses you know, a little though, Ross, because now they have interleague. I hate interleague. Like you wanted, you, you wanted to see somebody yeah. face somebody they never faced before. Now everybody right. plays. It, it's. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. And also, and, let's let's not rule out now, for the last twenty years, NFL Sunday Ticket, League Pass for NBA Baseball Pass. You get to watch all these guys on TV all the time now. You know, you can watch. Yeah. Forget about watching a highlight. Now you can watch games. Yeah, yeah. Uh, nothing like when we were kids. That's for sure. And uh, on the bottom line is too is the NBA All Star Game. You mentioned the slam dunk competition, which probably. I would venture to say has a lot more interest in the game itself. And, and the guy who won the slam dunk competition last year played in the G League. So, he, you know, not only wasn't he an all-star, he's not even on an NBA roster. And then I, I saw these guys right. want like a million dollars each to be on a winning team. I'm thinking to myself, don't you have like contract incentives to like be an all-star? Yeah. Like, whoa. Yeah, you know, it just shows to show you what that league is. We need an in season tournament to keep you guys interested. We have to p- pass a law so you guys can't take off a day game after night game. I mean, that's a terrible. You know, I hate the NBA. And, I really do. And a, million, and a million dollars to a winning team on All Star in an All Star game, which means that the majority of those guys are making mega million dollar contracts. Is peanuts? Really is. I mean, I hate to say it. It's not peanuts to any one of us in the normal living world. Uh, but to them guys with their salary, it, it, it really is not a lot of incentive. All right, let's get on to more important things. And that's college basketball. And we got some good ones we're covering today. Uh, Jesse's going to be looking at the UConn and Creighton game that goes at 8.30 PM Eastern time tonight. Um, and Sean will be looking at uh, the Mountain West conference game. I'm looking forward to this one, San Diego state, and Utah state, and I'll be looking at the uh, Big 12 matchup between the Baylor Bears and the BYU Cougars that will be played in Provo, Utah, home to BYU Cougars. But let's get right to it. Um, Sean, let's start with you. Uh, this is an intriguing uh, Mountain West Conference matchup. San Diego State coming off a big win at home against New Mexico. Now they travel on the road to take on a Utah State team that will have a little bit of sour taste in their mouth after getting drubbed in their previous game, Utah State minus two and a half right now in the total 144. What do you got for us? Yeah, the 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 co-leaders right now in the Mountain West, your your Aggies with the Aztecs here. And as you mentioned, they get pummeled 75-55 last game out. Colorado State took care of them there. Um, San Diego State did beat them at home 81-67 just a couple weeks ago. But I'm going to go with the home team here. You're off a loss. You have a revenge spot. And I said it, I think you said it, I said it, winning on the road is difficult. Hello, five, 20 and 6 for Aztecs, 5 and 6 on the road. You lost at Nevada, you lost to Colorado State, you lose at Boise, you lose at New Mexico. Well, here comes another team that's tied with you at the top of the league. So you lost to the team in second place and third place and fourth place on the road. It's tough to win on the road. It's just that simple. I'm going to take the home team here. I got a little revenge spot, which is, you know, it, it, it's a stupid kind of play. But in college basketball, teams do split often. It, it's not shocking. It is not shocking. I, you know, um, I have a team that just got hammered their last game out. So anytime you get beat by 20, I don't care what team you are, a good team, a bad team, you're going to probably show some heart the next game out. Coach is going to be on you for the week, running a ragged during practice. And you're home. You got a ranked team coming in. A lot of hype, but not a rivalry per se, but uh, I think the crowd will be in it. 
you're home. Get your revenge. Get your win. Take care of the Mountain West. Get that bid. I'd, 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 I hope to see like four teams from the Mountain West get in. Although, why do I feel that's not going to happen? Yeah, I, I think it will, Sean. I really do. All right. So, Sean Higgs likes Utah State minus uh, the two and a half at home against San Diego State. This is a, um, Jesse, this is a situation where betters fail consistently and they put too much stock in what they just recently uh, witnessed. Um, you have a San Diego State team beating a New Mexico club that had been ranked in the top 25 for the majority of the last six weeks or so um, until recently. And uh, they win 81 70, uh, not convincing manner, but convincing enough. And then Utah State goes on the road at Colorado State, and like Sean just alluded to, loses by 20. And now Utah State's the favorite. The underdog has to be the play, right, Jesse? That's the way these A, A, Team A beats Team B and Team B beats Team C, and Team A must have to beat Team C like we hear in a lot of the comments section. What do you think, Jess? Yeah, that's what they tell me, Ross, but uh, yeah. not my style. One thing that neither of you guys mentioned, though, was uh, – this is, a, once again, unranked home favorite versus a ranked team. And there's a lot of people talking about this on Twitter. Apparently, it's hitting 70% straight up when an unranked team is a home favorite against a ranked team. 74% uh, if it's a three-point favorite or less fits into that category. But I'm going to say that that's a little bit dubious based on the fact that uh, Utah State's actually got a better record than San Diego State. Sure, San Diego State is ranked and Utah State isn't, but they're just barely outside the top 25. They probably should even still be in there. And that, and that that's likely to change based on this game. If Utah State wins this game, they're back in the top 25. Um, I, I don't like the side as much in this game. I mean, uh, I, I, I might lean towards the home team, but I had my eye on the total. And uh, my reasoning for the total, the history in this matchup, says that these teams have failed to reach this number in seven of their last eight games. But there's reason to believe that this is going to be a higher scoring game, and I'll get into that. Uh, Utah State's averaging 80.1 points per game this season. That's up two points from last year. San Diego State's averaging 75.8 points per game, which is up almost five points from last year. And San Diego State's allowing 66.9 points per game this season, which is up almost three and a half points per game. Utah State, defensively, they're roughly the same as they were last year. Um, and if you lean towards Utah State, they're the team that plays at a faster pace and, uh, and scores more points. So you uh, you might lean toward the over. I think the, the number is a little low, all things considered. Yeah, um, there you go. It's uh, So Jesse's um, opinion is to go over that total of 144. Um, and, you know, you look at the home away dichotomies for San Diego State. They're unbeaten at home. And like Sean says, it's very difficult to win in these competitive conferences on the road. Even a quality team and a top 25 team like San Diego State, they've gone one and four straight up in ATS in their last five conference uh, away games. And on the other hand, uh, Utah's 11 and one straight up at home this year. And they perennially had a very strong home court in recent seasons. So um, again, uh, we have a uh, official pick here on Utah state minus two and a half. I'm going to say, if you can get 140 or less, go Utah state on the money line and Jesse's opinion, he agrees with the Utah state side, but not as much as his opinion uh, leans more toward going over uh, the total of 144 in this contest. So, all right, Jesse, your turn. Um, pretty good matchup again. Uh, UConn, the number one team in the country who just absolutely lambasted Marquette on Saturday. And if you were with us on our show last week, uh, I believe it was Friday's show, we all agreed that we like UConn in that game. And it looked like a sucker play to pay, play the big underdog, red hot Marquette uh, Golden Eagles. And uh, we came through. But anyway, this is a whole different set of circumstances. Now UConn goes on the road at Creighton, uh, 8.30 p.m. Eastern time start. Right now UConn is a three-point road favorite to total 145. I'll tell you, Jesse, I was uh, a little bit surprised that not only Creighton one at Butler, but the decisive manner in which they did so. Um, 
What say you on this matchup? Well, who in their right mind is going to bet against the Huskies right now? 24 and two overall, ranked number one in the country, 14 and one in the Big East, defending champions. But, uh, you know, my man Ross Benjamin likes to say, think like a bookmaker. When you see that number sitting at just three, that might tell you something. Uh, you got to ask yourself, is this a letdown spot coming off that 28 point win over Marquette? There's only a few spots on the schedule that look like trouble for uh, UConn, and this this is one of them. And when you look at the history, uh, Creighton has had their number. Creighton's won six of the last eight straight up. They've won four straight home meetings against UConn. And uh, as much as uh, UConn has a six and two road record, uh, their uh, their wins haven't come against team in conference play. They haven't beaten any teams with uh, winning records in the conference so um this this will be their toughest road game in conference play and they've lost in this situation in the past i, I will take the three points and i'll take creighton yeah creighton uh, you know another strong home court i mean they're they have lost twice at home this year um so it's not like they're invincible at home but this is there's going to be a lot of emotion in the building tonight uh nationally ranked creighton team as a home underdog uh, in front of 17,000 plus on their home floor, which they seem to sell out every game. And, and you would think that, that that crowd will be amped up. And certainly that factor comes into play as well. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I agree with both you gentlemen, the Creighton plus the three, uh, or I agree with you, Jesse, Creighton plus the three seems like a very enticing play. Uh, Sean, your take? Yeah, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not looking to... <laughs> Be the guy in Tiananmen Square to stand in front of a tank and getting run over by by yeah. UConn. You know, I fourteen in a row, and yeah, it's a three, and it's like an easy one. Well, I thought I had an easy one too when they were a three point fave over St. John's. That didn't work out well. Nor as a three and a half point fave over Villanova on the road. That didn't work out well. And as far as a, a letdown, I mean, how do you have a letdown when you're twenty five and two or whatever? They don't have. I mean, they had a flat spot, I guess, against the Hall after they beat. North Carolina and Gonzaga on the road came back and had a, a kind of flat game. I don't, I don't know. I just can't uh, get in front of a team that really looks like right now they're the best in the land. It's not like a Purdue team that loses every 14 days on the road. And <laughs> our, our guy Ninja will point out, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's not like <laughs> they lose all their road games in the, in the big 10, like, like Purdue is right. So yeah. they're winning. They get a short number. They don't care. They still cover it. And I, they're good. They're really good. Yeah. Anyway, uh, our official pick here is Creighton plus the three against UConn and repeating again. Um, Sean likes Utah State minus two and a half over San Diego State. Yeah, our man Ninja, by the way, it was first thing Monday morning, chimed in to the comment yes. section on our Monday video <laughs> to remind us if Purdue is overrated. Did he call and, him uh, Purd who? He wrote Purd who. <laughs> Purd who. Yeah. who. Purd right. who. W-H-O. He's tonight. Purd who? They're overrated, Higgs. Yeah. Well, you know what? Hats off. Yeah, Ninja's a great follower, and uh, we appreciate him, and uh, we get a big laugh. He's been, uh, you know, if you haven't followed our live broadcast, Ninja's been uh, anti-Purdue all year long. And, uh, boy, oh, boy, he was feeling his oats after Saturday, losing at Ohio State, a team that just fired their head coach and had been struggling mightily. Anyway, my game is Baylor at BYU. Right now, BYU is a four-point favorite, 155. Guys, this opened with BYU being a one-point favorite. Yeah. Now they're up to four. Uh, here's the thing though, you know, I look at Baylor, they're just three and three straight up in true road games, uh, but they've covered five of those six games. Why? Because their three losses came by a combined nine points, including one of those in overtime at Kansas state. Um, so this isn't a team that's easy to blow out, even though they're on the road. Uh, Baylor's coming off a 94, 81 win on Saturday, um, and they're seven and zero straight up in ATS this year, uh, in their last seven it, following a game in which they've scored eighty five points or more. That win was at West Virginia, by the way. And repeating again, seven and zero straight up in ATS in their last seven this season, following a game in which they scored eighty five points or more. Baylor's also uh, number one in the nation 
uh, in three-point shooting at 40.1%, also number four nationally in adjusted offensive efficiency, and they say the great equalizer for an underdog is their ability to hit three-point shots, and uh, Baylor's the best at that in the country right now. Uh, BYU, they're coming off a 93-83 loss at Oklahoma State in the game. They were a sizable road favorite, and that's a terrible Oklahoma State team. Uh, yeah, were they caught looking ahead? I don't know, but even if they were caught looking ahead, there's no excuse to losing by double digits to Oklahoma State on the road. The game before that, uh, they were less than inspiring as well. They entertained UCF, uh, who's a bottom-tier Big 12 team right now. Um, and uh, they barely got by at home 90 to 88. In those two contests, they allowed uh, those teams to shoot a combined 54.6% from the field. Uh, they've also allowed 82 points or more, meaning BYU, in three of their last four games. Uh, this is a good offensive team, but they have their defensive uh, deficiencies, and that's been a glaring weakness in recent games. BYU is 4-2 and two in conference home games. Uh, no shame in losing to Houston, but they lose to Cincinnati as well uh, as a nine-and-a-half point favorite. Uh, they're only two and four against the spread in those six conference home games, so it's not like they're making betters a lot of money as a home favorite or, or even home dog, for that matter, as they were against Houston. Um, the first meeting this year at Baylor, BYU shot 49.1%, which in most cases will put you on the winning side, especially – uh, if we're talking about covering as an underdog, but they didn't either. They lost the game 81-72, and they failed to cover as a four-and-a-half-point dog. Uh, so even with that offensive type of performance um, on the road, they were not able to cover as a four-and-a-half-point dog and lost the game outright by nine. I'm going with Baylor here, plus the four at BYU. Sean? You know, I'm, I'm staring at their schedule for Baylor. Uh Two OT losses, the one at TCU at home on, a, I think, a late three-pointer there. Four on road to K-State. Uh, they lost a two at Texas, lost by three at Kansas. Back-to-back -back losses, neutrals, Duke and Michigan State. And yet this line opened at – I saw a two. You said it was one and a half. Four. Like, what am I missing here? Like, why shouldn't I have yeah. Baylor in four? Like, they play tough game. I mean, they play tough, close road games. I, I had to – you know, the four seem – I, if it if opened at four, it would be a Baylor no-brainer. The fact that it went up to four, I'm just dumbfounded. Well, I, I, I really am. One, I, I think mind. BYU, yeah. they're not a bad team. It's first year in the Big 12, definitely yeah. better than the West Coast. But I don't know. I, I, is it a Baylor coming to the element? And I had West Virginia last week. I'm like, I'll take eight points on a road. It's tough to win by 10 on a road. Yeah. You know, we talk about that. Uh, is it just the travel spot for them? Is that why it's going up? I, you know, I like Baylor. I, I couldn't, I couldn't get to the window though with him. Yeah. And again, uh, it's a free pick. It's not going to be part of my premium car, but I do have a strong opinion in that regard. And, uh, seven and two with my last nine free picks over the last two and a half weeks here on the channel, including yesterday at Virginia Tech, who just absolutely dismantled Virginia as a three and a half point favorite. And then I also gave you San Diego State on Friday. You know, I told you it was my premium play, and they came through easily against New Mexico. So uh, we've been rolling here. And, uh, Jesse, your thoughts on this Baylor-BYU game? Yeah, maybe BYU's finding life in the Big 12 to be a little challenging. You know, uh, welcome to the Big 12. No easy games. Uh, I couldn't talk myself into BYU at minus one. There's no way I could talk myself into – laying four points with them. Uh, I think it's Baylor or nothing. Yeah. All right. So our uh, our free picks for today, Jesse likes uh, UConn minus the three uh, over, Creighton excuse me, Jesse likes Creighton plus the three over UConn. Sean likes Utah State minus two and a half against San Diego State. And Ross likes Baylor plus the four at BYU. Folks, if you have not subscribed to our YouTube channel, I don't know what you're waiting for. It's absolutely free to do so. We get all these uh, compliments on the comment section uh, and uh, we appreciate all of them. We appreciate all of the 12,000 plus subscribers we have. 
but we also uh, always want more because we want to make you a smarter sports better today than you were yesterday. So there's a black subscribe button right underneath. Just click on that. That'll get you signed up free. And also, uh, if you're on your PC, you'll see a WC logo right in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. Uh, that will get you uh, subscribed for free as well. And then take one extra step further. And this goes for any of you who have subscribed already and haven't done so. Go into your YouTube settings. It'll take you 30 seconds. Click on the notification alert notification bell for the Winter Circle Sports Betting Channel. And, it, and uh, you'll be notified immediately upon any of our five free uh, or five podcasts, I should say, going up on our channel on a weekly basis. Jesse, there's a like button right underneath. What should, should they do with that? Ross, I'm, I'm thinking they should probably smash that like button. Smash it. Really <laughs> smash right. that like button. I'll say it for them. So uh, smash that like button. Hit that like button. Tap that like button. Whatever you prefer, folks. It's just a small token of your appreciation for the work, time, and effort we put in to bringing you the best quality podcast we possibly can. And our theme has always been is still and will continue to be. We want to make you a smarter sports better today than you were yesterday. I will be back uh, tomorrow right here on this channel with these two gentlemen, and we'll be covering uh, a couple, three more college basketball games for you. And then Thursday, I'll be back with Doug Upstone, and Friday is our live show with these two gentlemen as well. And uh, we really uh, appreciate the response we got in our, uh, our last live show plenty of viewers plenty of comments and we would encourage you people to chime in one o'clock uh eastern time on friday and uh, we'll take all your questions and comments and get back to each and every one of you time permitting until the next time for jesse Shule, sean higgs and ross benjamin take care and god bless folks <laughs>